how do I find a Salesforce partner or select one that's good? There are a huge variety of Salesforce partners out there in the ecosystem. I've had the, the pleasure of being part of the ecosystem. We started off in the Asia ecosystem and graduated to the ANZ ecosystem. We started as a little baby partner and now we're one of the biggest partners that hasn't been acquired. Uh, most of my competitors have been acquired by Deloitte, Accenture, et cetera, all these large organizations. So there's a few independent partners out there that are you know, similar size to us, but there's a, a probably about 400 out there in the market that are doing stuff at varying sizes with varying expertise. Because Salesforce has such a wide ecosystem of platforms, 10 years ago, it used to be CRM and mostly sales cloud. Uh, we actually started as a, as a marketing cloud expert and we leaned into marketing cloud and marketing cloud really was a specialist skill set. And the CRM partners struggled to talk about marketing cloud because it required talking about things like CRO and SEO and social and all of these concepts, which were very different to CRM. So that's where we started our game. And, you know, ever since we've grown and we've built a CRM practice, we've built a MuleSoft practice, we've built all of these practices to support, at the end of the day, custom lifetime value. We're just here to help people use Salesforce to acquire customers and retain customers and make more money. So that's our focus as a partner. But as I said, there's many other partners. So there's other partners that specialize in MuleSoft. There's also a bunch of core partners that do core really well. So core is CRM and they will come in and do your whole backend digital transformation and transform your finance and operations, automation, all of those kind of things, because that's been their specialization. There's also partners that specialize in industry like manufacturing and each of the industries has a cloud pretty much now. So Salesforce have manufacturing cloud and financial services cloud and consumer goods cloud and nonprofit cloud and education cloud. So the average partner can't be expected to know everything about every single individual industry and individual cloud. So that's where it's important to think, how do I find a partner that knows about my industry? How do I find a partner that knows about the clouds that I want to purchase? And how do I know a partner that's done similar implementations to me? Have they worked with a similar business to my business and done a similar implementation? So I know they're not cutting their teeth on me. They're not practicing, they're not learning. That's probably the biggest kind of three things to look for is industry, tech, and relevant experience. It's hard to do services if you think about you know, every company that buys Salesforce, they think, oh, great, I've, I've done the hard part. I, I spent the big dollars. I'm the man. But actually, that's just the that's actually the easiest part. The hard part is changing your business. You've got to do that with technology. You can't just you can't just buy the tech and assume that it's going to change your business overnight. You've got to lead the change. The CEO has to be the one every day hounding on about Salesforce because it's so important that they set a culture internally of that change happening. Where we see clients do it really well is where they do that and they care about it. The CEO and the C-suite make a decision together that they are going to invest in a transformation based around Salesforce. That's the best scenario. The worst scenario is where a guy in marketing buys the licenses and he's the only one that cares about it because he knows he needs to do it, but no one else cares about it because they've got their big problems. You know, they've got their big SAP thing. It can't be a small strategy. It has to be really big front and center with investment. So when you're choosing a partner, you have to take this into consideration as well as what are you going to do? and be upfront with them because they need to know that you're also leaning into the project on your side. There's actually two projects that happen with any Salesforce implementation. There's your project where you have to have a person giving requirements and signing off UAT. You have to have a project manager that is scheduling. This is the date that we're going to train you. This is the date that you're going to get your t-shirt. This is the date that we're going to have the internal announcements. So someone needs to manage the internal project. Someone needs to manage our project. So we have a project manager. We'll be responsible for our stuff. We'll tell you what our dependencies are, but someone needs to manage the project on your side. If there's a change to your business process, someone needs to write the process change as well and go through that. That's a normal thing to do. You can expect your partner to do all of this, 
but it comes with a cost like there's a cost in the partner providing a ba that knows your business really well or knows your industry really well uh, and can sit there and for weeks upon weeks rewrite your business processes it'll take them twice as long because they don't know what the current one is so that's why you have to have a ba to write your processes to talk to all the stakeholders internally and really make sure that works Partners can provide this, so it's not something partners don't do, but it's beneficial to do. If you're looking at a Salesforce project, project manager, business analyst are really key roles that you want to put on your side to make the partner successful. Where we see failure is sometimes clients are just naive and they don't think it's required or they think, I've paid Salesforce, I've paid the Salesforce partner, that's all the money I need to pay, I'm good, walk away. And that's an incorrect way of looking at it. You've got to think about what's your internal cost to support the project and what's your internal cost after the project is to support the ongoing maintenance and enhancements of that product. The other part of this is that it's incorrect to think that it is a one and done project. The best way to do Salesforce projects is to do an MVP, go live and then iterate. That's the, the best way. And anyone that argues with that is incorrect or giving you bad advice. Because Salesforce is a SaaS product, you're paying for every day that you've got access to it. Every day, it, you're just wasting money if you're not using it. So that's why you shouldn't have a big project and go, let's do a, a three month project and then start to go live. What you should do is MVP your requirements. And when I say MVP, I really mean just use Salesforce. It's already got a data model. It's if I think of any type of thing I need in my business, I need to track contacts, accounts, opportunities, leads, contracts, orders, standard data model already in place with Salesforce, 90% of the way there. Clients that enhance it and change it without using the basics, that's incorrect. It's like buying a Swiss Army knife and then going, oh, I can't use any of these knives because none of them are exactly what I want. I'm going to fashion another knife and I'm going to sellotape it to the Swiss Army knife. I'm going to use the knife that I really exactly want because the other ones aren't quite right. That's, that's what customizing Salesforce is like. You think you've figured it out better than 90 million other businesses that have come in the past and Salesforce have designed their business around. You think you've got a better way of doing it. That's incorrect. There's actually a default way. And if you adjust your business process to the default way, then it's really easy to be successful with Salesforce. If you come at Salesforce and try force it to be something it's not then you know you're just going to have a harder time like every thing you customize in salesforce you need to maintain you need to document you need to administer that how to select a salesforce partner you're really looking at you know what is their background those three different things technical skills or capability industry depth and uh, relevant customer experience but then you also have to look at yourself and how are you going to dance with that partner that's part of the decision if you want a partner that's going to do everything for you and you you just kind of wait until it's done then that's a specific type of partner and they there are partners that do that and we can do that as long as we know that that's the arrangement but if you really want to make it the best dance you you have to come at it salesforce come at it as well and really the three of us are dancing together as you get value in an mvp and then iterative fashion